Welcome to the Project Project with Sam and Lewis, the podcast that looks at projects throughout pop culture and history. I'm Sam. And I'm Lewis. And on today's episode, we're talking about the Project Shadow Chaser 3. We are. We're going back to the much beloved film series after covering the first two many, many months ago. And it doesn't actually have the in the title. I don't know why I said that. It wasn't even written down. So I had forgotten until yes. you said it. <laughs> the Project Shadow Chaser. Project Shadow Chaser 3, also known as Project Shadow Chaser 3000, I think. Um, yes, Project Shadow, Ch- Project Shadow Chaser 3000 and Project Shadow Chaser Edge of Darkness. Edge of Darkness. And it's a, it's, it's a little bit different to the ones we've done before, yeah, isn't it? Definitely is a bit different. Uh, probably yeah, the most different one so far. Well, the first one was Die Hard yes. with a twisty bit. Yep. And the second one was more Die Hard. More Die Hard. Kind of like Die Hard 2 almost. Yeah. It? And this one's like Alien. With a bit of the thing, but not very good. And yeah. kind of Blade Runner. I mean, a one of the characters of... is dressed up like a character from Blade yeah, Runner. Yeah, a bit of Terminator as well. Yeah, that's the kind of main inspiration for Shadow Chaser normally, isn't it? Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, we, we will talk about that in a couple of minutes. But um, if we do have time codes in the episode description, so you can skip straight to that or to our personal projects. I don't know if we've got anything joint to discuss today, but I'm sure we've got some interesting things each. We certainly do. You can probably look in the episode des- description to find you out what they are. indeed. I've actually got a couple of bits of Comic-Con news that we missed last week. Nice. Um, mainly because I haven't really watched much this week. So I no, I bring something to do the table. not have much to say either. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But uh, before we get into anything, how are you, Lewis? Yes, not bad. Um, when... Up to the Devil's Dyke on the Saturday, which people local will be aware yeah, of, and yeah. a nice stroll back from there in the nice weather, which was good. Cool, cool. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're both away this weekend, we so uh, recording early, and it's not going to be a long work week, which is good. No, I need to make sure that I get this edited before we leave. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will be in uh, we'll be in Edinburgh. So uh, if we've got any listeners there that want to uh, recommend anything, please just let us know in the details that we'll provide at the end of the episode, as we yes. always do. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a first segment, haven't we, Lewis? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask how you oh, are okay. first, well, but uh... I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, I haven't cool. really, really done much. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just getting uh, prepped for the uh, the trip that we've got coming up. Yes. So yeah, but yeah, fair enough. Um, so <laughs> something gone wrong with the theme this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> my phone may or may not have been on silent. <laughs> Project news. <laughs> How loud that was. More than made up for it. There, so. <laughs> um, thanks, as always, to Steve Oxen for providing our theme tune, <laughs> um, whether he knows about it or not. <laughs> should probably start tagging him, although he might start demanding royalties from his royalty-free music. So <laughs> yeah, we'll then, then we'd have to find a new Project News <laughs> theme tune. <laughs> oh, a new handful of them anyway. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the first bit of news is... League of Legends fighter Project L will be free to play. Okay. Um, the 2D fighting game will also have respectful monetization. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. So they're like, we're going to do it, but not maybe as bad as some other places. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's free to play new League of Legends fighting game. I think. Yeah. It's a, so if it's a two D fighter, it's more like a Tekken or a Street Fighter. Yeah. Kind of based thing. based yeah, on yeah. the pictures, it's that kind of thing. But with League of Legends type characters. Yeah, the only thing I know about that is uh, Arcane, which I've mentioned a couple of times. Yeah, so I know they've got a massive selection of characters because they're a. Uh, it's uh, a big old game. It's a big old game. It's been going for ten plus years. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's free to play, so that may be something we could cover in a future yeah, episode. Yeah, if they keep the name as well. A lot of these they ditch them when they go to release, <laughs> don't they? But... It seems like they are sticking with Project L. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it looks like a very well, we've got, Tekken Mortal Kombat We've type got a, uh, a friend who's a big fan of that franchise, or at least yes. the, uh, the, the, the standard game. So that might be one to get them involved in. Yes, there's going to be one more update later, in this, later on this year, and then I presume it'll be a 
2023 release. Cool. Um, it'll probably, because it's free, be on various platforms. But yeah. Yeah. Have you played much League of Legends? I don't think I've played any. I've known a couple of people over the years that have been quite into it. I've yeah. mentioned one by uh, not name just them. But yeah, uh, a couple of friends at uni were into it as well. So yeah, it's something I'm aware of. And like I say, Al- Arcane is the only way I'd know anything in, <laughs> in depth about it at all but yes it's uh, um I, th- I think they're called mobas m-o-b-a's it's um it's a bit like a uh, real-time strategy type thing but more like actiony kind of I'm thing sure so we'll get people emailing in if you've got it wrong it there. might be moba it's like a top-down kind of thing and you there's catch the flags and stuff going on not completely top down but you know like a real-time strategy view yeah but you play as like a character with uh with all the special abilities so I'm sure that kind of stuff lends itself well to uh tech and street fighter style yeah. Game. yeah 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 so that'll be out i'm sure we'll have another update later on in a different episode can't wait um the other bit of project news i've got is Mm -hmm. the lockdown musical project poised for edinburgh festival okay so (laughs) okay (laughs) we have um said up top that we're going to edinburgh this weekend um a music teacher has told how a chat about sword fighting sparked a lockdown musical project about to be shown for the first time at edinburgh fringe (laughs) Um, so it's, uh, it's, think it's like a musical story right. about Viking sisters, um, that this music teacher wrote by herself during lockdown. Um, it's got 11 person cast and band, um, and will be, it's an hour long show that is running throughout August at, okay. at Edinburgh. Um, What's it called? Um, that's a very, very good question. Uh, Bloodlina. <laughs> okay, I guess that's the name of one of the characters, maybe, or a yeah, sort of Viking name in general. B L O D L I N A. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, if it had projects in the title, I'd be almost insisting that we find time yeah. to see it. <laughs> we could have done like a. Gone uh, to our first like live one. Yeah, it would have saved us having to watch something for next week as well, wouldn't it? So <laughs> everyone um in it is trained, trained, trained. They all in, changed into Vikings. <laughs> trained in stage combat, so I feel like it'll cool. be quite heavy on that. A okay. music, a musical battle, a Viking musical. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, it does actually sound quite fun. Um, so I may look into more details of yeah, that. Yeah, it's a shame. We're only up there for a couple of nights, but I know a couple of our friends, at least one of them is is staying for a couple more days, but obviously you have to get time off work and all that sort of thing. But yeah. Yeah, it is a, it's a shame. I, I've never been up there before and yeah, I try and soak up as much as I can in between our planned scheduled activities. <laughs> yes. But yeah. yeah, maybe if we've got time, we can go see Blood Leader. Blood Leader. Or at least we can get like a photo of the poster if we find it around. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it might be on like an, an early slot when yeah, we've got a bit yeah. of more time. Bit of time. Or a, yeah, I was going to say a late slot, but that wouldn't do us any good. But... <laughs> no. Um, but that is the project news for the week. Nice. Um, which Thank means you. we are now up to our much anticipated main topic project shadow chaser free or from 1995 (laughs) yeah so the year year after shadow chaser 2 yeah um and i've I've just i've just looked at it's on like at lunchtime so it's a real possibility well there we go (laughs) but yeah it's uh where is it set sorry you, were, you carry on. <laughs> 1995, so it's a year after the last it's one. a year after. Definitely yeah. not filmed back to back. No, no. It's not a film, very different film, as very, we said. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, it was... I knew kind of the setting of this going into it. This was the yeah. thing that I was not telling you before. Yeah. <laughs> because the other two were set vaguely kind of future versions of the 90s. Maybe maybe the future, but like... Just seemed like the 90s yeah, with a robot. With Although a robot. the first one was in the future, because the cryo freezing. That's right, yeah. But you wouldn't know otherwise. It's kind yeah. of... Whereas this one is... I don't know... We, we don't know when, but it's clearly like... The future future. In the there? far future, the yeah. The far future, Like yeah. Alien. Think Alien. Yes. And it's yes. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, so it is once again directed by John Ayers, who directed mm. the first two. So he has done all three. He's okay, done all cool. three, but he didn't do the fourth one. So that may be different. I mean, I can maybe see why he left it after this one. Yep. Um, interestingly, it's written by a man called Nick Davis. Okay. Um, who is usually a visual effects supervisor. Okay. Um, and his filmography for visual effects is quite impressive. Oh, really? Okay, cool, cool. So uh, he did Batman Forever, okay. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, yeah. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, yeah. Troy, okay. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> The Dark Knight, for which he was nominated for an Oscar. Wow, okay. Clash of the Titans, <laughs> Wrath of the Titans, and Edge of Tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So lots of big films. Big films. About, about <laughs> half of them are like... Decent, decent films. Yeah, well. and even the less ones still have fairly good visual effects. Yeah, so. and that is something that I came away from this with. Like, despite me not loving, you know, saying earlier, me not loving a lot of this film, or at least parts of it, the visual effects, I think, were, were genuinely really impressive. Like, especially for a low-budget, mid-90s yeah. film. Like, some of the... One of the first shots we see um, is, like, an outside of a spaceship shot. Yeah. And it's on par with, like, the like early Star Wars films, which were, like, you know... Yeah. Little, like, miniatures and stuff like that. Particularly alongside, like, the 90s film set in space. Yeah, totally. It, it felt like it relied maybe more on some practical effects for those bits. I yeah. Don't, I don't know that for sure. And there's other parts with kind of some janky kind of morphing and stuff like that. So it may be a case that Nick Davis did more than just write it that's and what did I'm thinking. help out Maybe he elsewhere. wrote things that he knew that he could, you know, yeah. at least supervise or something like that. Um, yeah. I'll quickly look to see if uh, who the visual effects Yeah, it may, it may well be that he wrote it and uh, did the visual effects for it. Um, but... It doesn't actually say, I guess it wasn't a very big film, so it's kind of hard to... Yeah, I mean, we locate. could just assume that he was involved in some Let's way. Let's say he did it. <laughs> Um, so the cast, um, yes. mostly an all new cast, obviously. Yeah. Um, we've got Sam Bottoms. Yeah, which I thought was a funny name. Who kind of plays the main lead. Yeah, although it's one of those films where for the first half an hour or so, it's Huge really cast. it's really unclear who you were going to follow. For three quarters of this film, in my notes, he's other guy. Well, I wrote him down as Harrison Ford because he <laughs> looks very very similar to Deckard <laughs> in the first I can uh, see in the first one honestly I, I if you do a side by side um and he he's, he's, he's the hairdo he's got like a vaguely Harrison Ford like less attractive Harrison Ford face <laughs> and just the the comparisons we've made for the first two films especially the first one with Blade Runner and how yep. Uh, Frank Zalgarino's character is very much like um, the the enemy android in those films. Yeah. I, I've it's it's got to be intentional on some part there. Yeah. That they've 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 dressed him kind of in the similar way as well. Uh, but people may know him from Apocalypse Now, where he plays one of the core group of soldiers. Right. Okay. I do think he's one of the ones that survives at the end. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he was in Sea Biscuits. <laughs> right. I've not seen that. Which before. I've also not seen. That's a Toby Maguire film, isn't it? Um, yes. Pretty sure it is. It's it was, the horse. Uh, <laughs> maybe pre Spider, pre Spider Man. Maybe just post Spider Man, or in between some of them. Yeah. Um, we've got Christopher Atkins. Yes, we get a message saying, like, feature special appearance by Christopher Atkins. Yes, and our American list, older American listeners may know him from Dallas. Right. Where he was in, like, 30 episodes Is of he that. the guy who looks like Tiger King? No, he is... Um... Are you sure? Oh, no, yes, he is. The guy he's, who looks like Joe look, Exotic a little bit. He looks a bit like Mackenzie Crook. Yes, and that as well. And yeah, 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 throughout yeah. my notes, he's just Mackenzie Crook. Well, he's called Snake, and I yeah, remember that. that's why I thought I got that later on. Because there's a moment, I don't know if you've ever played any of the Metal Gear Solid games, but one of the like kind of iconic things is when you die, the person on the radio is like, Snake, Snake! <laughs> right. And it's like, do 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 and there's a moment in this where someone's like, Snake! And I'm like, I don't know if that's uh, that's a reference or if that's just me. <laughs> um, we've got Masetta Vanda, who plays the main woman, the Russian yeah, woman. Yeah, I think she's called Rhea, maybe. Yeah, um, who is was in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Right, yeah. She, she looks like 
Yeah, I've seen bits of that film. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can think of she's picture. She's in yeah. Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? as okay. one of the sirens or equivalent in that film. Right. And she's done lots of one-off TV shows like Buffy, Star Trek, Stargate, NCIS, Low. She looked like a 90s actress, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, uh, yeah. But she is a potential future Project Alumni. Okay. Uh, because in the same year as this... Right. She was also in Project Metal Beast. Right, which was something I mentioned last week off pod. Yeah. As a potential Project Ober film. Yeah, so she may become an alumni later Fantastic. in this year. I'm I'm looking forward to watching that at some point because <laughs> yeah. what I've heard is uh well, yeah, you can imagine from the name exactly what it is. Um, and then the final main listed cast member is our one and only hero, Frank Zagarino. Yes, yes. Um, who, of course, returns. Um, in the first film, he was Romulus Shadow Chaser. Yes. In the second film, he was just Shadow Chaser or the android. Yeah, it varies. And in yeah. this, he's just the android. Yes. There's also another person. There who... is a big cast. They just picked out the four yeah, top billing. The guy who played the kind of, he ends up being a bit of a bad guy, Christopher The Neen. British guy, yeah. Yeah, who I was constantly questioning whether he was British. He was definitely like... not British. Well, he, he plays a British. He, he... No, apparently he is British. I've got oh him up here. Oh my God. But <laughs> the only reason I know is because one of the first things he says is wanker. And yeah. Then, and then I was like, okay. It's very clearly meant to be a British character. But he was down as like also featuring, like yeah. he was in the opening credits. So I was like, is he someone? But looking at this Wikipedia page, it's like he No, he's not he's in <laughs> stuff, but I don't recognize any of them. Um, so before we get into it, um, do oh, you he know... was in the prestige. Oh, okay. <laughs> um do you want to have a guess what the IMDb score is for this film? Um, I would guess probably the lowest out of all the Shadow Chasers, and that's saying something. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go like three. 3.6. Oh, yeah, so close go. enough. I'm knack for it now. Um, yeah, low, it is the lowest rating of the Shadow Chasers. Um, and the previous two aren't very highly rated, but we enjoyed them. Yeah, they were enjoyable, but... I can see why people wouldn't necessarily rate them as uh, 10 out of yeah, 10. I think there's one thing that we particularly enjoyed in the first two that isn't really a factor in this one. Yeah, there was a there was a kind of obvious trajectory as to what made the other two films good. Yeah. And it, it went better and bigger and better in the second film. And it's almost non-existent in this yeah. one. <laughs> Precisely. Yes. Um, and I was a little disappointed by that. But yeah. we will get to that. So it opens up with a shot of space. Yes. So we all know we're in space. Did you know it was one. a space film at this point? Um, Had you seen anything? No, but I think you might have mentioned something about it being space at some point. Okay. I, I kind of said so it like... It didn't surprise me. Right. Okay. Yeah. You may have seen it at some point along the way then. Yeah. 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 Uh, but there's a spaceship, um, and then it's got kind of people walking around the ship. It's all kind of like yeah. metal platforms and, mm. and metal staircases and just seems to go on forever. It's, uh, that. This film series loves metal gantries. Yeah, it really and does. And there's a lot of them in this. Um, it particularly reminded me of like Terminator. Like, yeah. There's lots of gantries in Terminator. The, the last... Uh, the last kind of set piece uh when they're having a bit of a showdown felt like they just used the like set from terminator 2 yeah at the end where there's like the furnace and stuff it, like, yeah it, it felt like they were definitely trying to replicate that and that had only come out what like four years before so yeah. it's not really surprising well the first one came out just a couple years after die hard so yeah exactly <laughs> Um, and there's a woman like hiding yeah she's running area. along and people are I think people are shooting lasers near her and she's like running from them. Yeah. And then um, she like, yeah, she she's like, getting chased. We get cornered. Yeah. Um, and these people like, are putting a gun to her head. And there's two guys. Being, yeah. Don't really know what's going on. The third guy turns up also points the gun. And she's like, Oh no, it's me. I'm your wife. Yeah. Don't shoot. I think she's called Tatiana. Right. <laughs> they say it's me, Tatiana, your wife. Um, they um, say like, oh, I'm the only, oh, there's only one left alive or something. It must yeah. be her. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's, this is where I'm getting the thing in there. There's a kind of, 
imposter vibe going on somewhere or yes. or among us as the other yes. more modern <laughs> reference there um but then like a laser goes off and kind of stops her getting shot but she gets blown up by the laser yeah i don't know really what happens um, yeah. and her husband kisses her as she dies and then goes no 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 and it's kind of like oh what's happened there and then yeah it comes up 25 years later we're yeah. like cool don't know when this is, but now we're 25 years after that bit. Yeah, it's it's fairly good opening, I thought. It it wasn't like... A lot of this film is really weirdly directed, and it made me feel like it was a different person. Because there's lots of bits where there's, like you say, loads of characters on screen, and they're all trying to do something very hurriedly, and they're all just kind of talking, and you're like, okay, I I can't really follow this, but yeah. Um. So we want a different ship, the Constant Five. Yeah, it's some sort of like it's a communication that, station. Yeah, it orbits Mars or something like that. Yeah, they say, yeah. Um, and there's this group playing cards, and they're like they're weirdly like zigzaggy. Yeah, I like, thought that. Yeah, I thought they were going to be like some like space no. futuristic game we, we turn around and they're just they're playing just cards. cards and it just makes them surely harder to hold like yeah. the whole point of cards is that it's just like a universal symmetrical yeah. symbol but this part here feels like the start of like alien or something yeah where it's it? all just the team kind of bantering with each other you kind of get some of their personalities a bit yeah um, this is exactly what i wrote they're all badasses with various character traits i, I said there's <laughs> the classic cynical british guy yeah, and he goes oh you're a wanker oh yeah but like proper like wanker. Yeah. <laughs> um, it reminded me a bit of um, Cole Urban yes, in The Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Butcher. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's a Russian woman as well who, when they're playing cards, says this one guy, the guy who looks like Mackenzie Crook, yeah. um, knows he's not bluffing when he talks to the dogs. He's got a little dog There's a little Max. like Jack Russell type. <clears throat> dog little terrier thing and and the british guy gets like weirdly angry angry and we're like this guy's yeah. a bit weird he's like on edge from the start and it's kind of yeah. unexplained really maybe you pick something up that i didn't but he's just yeah. like he's set to be the guy that freaks out basically yeah he? and like turns his back on them um and we go to a control room that looked very much like a set from the 60s star trek series <laughs> and the weird like He's like a very strange character. I think he's called Wheels. The guy in the wheelchair. The guy in the wheelchair. He's called Wheels. And he looks, when he turns around and is revealed, it's like, oh, it's that guy. And I'm like, I don't know who that guy is. Yeah, he just looks like one of those like generic, like fat. He looks guys. like he could have played Mario in the Mario film in the 90s. <laughs> Apart from me, he's got, so he's got like, kind of like Carhartt, like workwear dungarees. Yeah. He's got like a, a normal tie just on his bare neck. And then he's got like a weird flat cap. Yeah. And he's got a big cigar and it's like, this is some interesting visual choices. And he here. keeps drinking. Yeah, from what, like a plastic bottle. It's a plastic bottle. It looks like it's got like flat Coke in I it. I think it's supposed to be alcohol because one time he drinks it and goes like, oh. Yeah, and then the guy at the end, the British guy, is yeah. drinking from it and smoking his cigars and is like, this is for you, so-and-so. Yeah. So I guess he's like a, a big drinker or something, but he's like the kind of, uh, like technical, like what yeah, do you, what do you call him? Like the engineer guy, pretty much. Uh, he kind of runs the control room. Um, there's some maintenance problems, but they've got 48 hours until they kind of get relieved and people yes, come along. That's it. Yeah. So it's classic, like you know, five days to retirement situation. Yeah. We then find as well that the Mackenzie Crook has been hiding cards under the dog whilst they're playing that. That's right. So he's cheating, and they're like, oh, he's uh. He's a bit dodgy. And then this British guy goes, wanker. Yeah, that's it. And there's also like a like a kind of wholesome couple characters that we see that aren't really in yeah. it at all afterwards. But... Is that the, the, the only two black characters? Oh, no, there's them. So there's the black woman who's like, she's like the tough character. Constantly working out. She's constantly. And there's one point where she's doing some sort of like, I don't know what, what exercise she's doing, but she's doing it in a really aggressive, like neck yeah. sticking out way. And then there's the black guy who's called Lance, of course. He's not called Lance. His first name is Lance. He, they call they call him his surname. A Lennox of... or Lenny. They I think it's Lance at Lance Lennox. It might be because <laughs> right. they definitely call him Lance at one point. And then there's there's like another couple, the one who gets like a pipe through. Her. Oh yeah, there's so many characters in this. Yeah, episode. and they're on like a different level to everyone. I don't really know yeah. what's going on. They're like 
Yeah, and, and there's also the professor who's like working with Rhea, the Russian woman. Yes, who I thought that she was a robot for the, a lot of this film. Yeah, I also wrote at some point that you can tell this came out after Pulp Fiction because they've made her look a lot like Mia Wallace. Yes. Um, but there's there's more just like they they're all doing their own jobs and there's lots of banter going on. Yeah. Um, and then this big alarm goes off mm. and it's the long range scanners. Yeah. And at first they think it must be a false alarm, but they start quickly like dressing and uh, getting like their suits on. Yeah. They, well, they they get dressed as if they're gonna put space suits on, but they're just all taking their clothes off and putting jumpsuits on. Yeah. And like that snake guy, Mackenzie Crook, has like big like nineties pants on. And yeah. It's like, okay. Um, but they've detected another ship on their scanners, and they're yeah. like, "What? There shouldn't be any ships here, and it's coming right towards them." And they're like. It's 20 minutes until it's going to hit us. Yeah. Um, and it feels like 20 minutes until it hits them. <laughs> yeah. Although the time goes really weird here. Yes. So they... <laughs> Were you watching a funny stream? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, this is the constant five. Please respond. And then the professor turns up. And I was like, why the fuck is there a professor on this <laughs> and ship? And he's the classic, like... He's kind of British. He's kind of German. I think he's German. I think he's supposed to be German, but his accent. Well, maybe he's Russian as well. Yeah. I think he's German, but it's, yeah. He's just um, the, I guess that he was called the professor about halfway through. And after I wrote it, someone went, professor. And I was like, well, <laughs> I got that right. I think they say it here, but. Okay. Yeah, um, I did actually write it here as they well. They figure out that the, what they've detected is the Siberia. Yes. Which was a ship that disappeared 25 years ago. Presumably yeah. the ship we saw at the start. Yes, it is. And we saw, uh, and they also say at some point that it's like a mining ship. So yeah. This is very like alien kind of thing, isn't and it? And it's, they re- they're hearing from it an international warning code saying stay away. Yeah, it's like do not enter. And they're like, well, we're not going to enter it, obviously. Doi. Yeah. Um, and then they say eight minutes to impact. And I was like, Wait, what? That it's conversation a, took 12 minutes. It took them a long time to get those jumpsuits on. Um, and they're trying their engines so they can move out of its kind of route. But yes. nothing's working. Because I think normally they just kind of orbit, don't they? So they haven't yeah. had to have their engines on is the idea. So the, the maintenance guys kind of run down to try and fix it. And then it's two minutes, 45 seconds. And there's like some really weird arguments. So they say that the power transport lines, blah, 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 are, are malfunctioning. Yeah. And Snake, Mackenzie Crook, is like trying to like fix it and then the British guy's like you're not allowed to fix this and he starts yeah. like having a go at him trying to like pull him away from the thing that he's fixing yeah. there's there's I get that we're supposed to have some like grudges here or maybe it's not maybe it's the Blade Runner guy that's doing it because he already hates him who knows it's very unclear about their relationship yeah. in, part, in the part of the film that's supposed to be kind of informing us about the pre-existing yes. relationships uh, but one of them goes we're screwed man we're screwed yeah. I think it's probably the Mackenzie Crook character yeah um, and then 70 seconds and I'm like yeah. this has literally been like on screen for 30 seconds I know um, and they finally got the engines working and they kind of move the ship slightly out of the way yeah and it's like a very close miss and they get to see it go like over the yeah top and it's and like, like it's like a hundred times the size of their yeah ship. it's massive yeah uh but everyone's kind of ha- happy and celebrating <laughs> the um lance or what did you what did you think lennox called? lennox let's call him lennox because i know who they say lennox at one I'm point i'm pretty sure it said that in the credits. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, oh, Lance a bit of a stereotypical name. Yeah, I, I thought he was Lenny, but they might call him that for it might sure. Be both. Maybe, maybe it was Lenny and I got confused, but um, he's like, oh, I thought we'd be eating breakfast with Martin Luther King. Yeah, and I was like, that's a weird reference for set in the future. It is, because this is at least like 2100, right? Yeah. Like, uh, well, well I guess 2050. When's Alien set? I think that's in the 22nd century, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So well, I just kind of assumed it's the same. Well, Blade Runner's not that far ahead, is it? Because we had 2049. Um, and Blade Runner had yeah. interstellar travel. So maybe they thought it was like 2030. Um, well, it doesn't actually say on the Wikipedia page for Alien. But yeah, it's it's at least like a couple of hundred years in the future. Yeah, that's, that's the... Um, let me see if it's on the... 
I'm sure if you just Googled what year was Alien. Oh, did you read out the Google description? You didn't, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, good. It's been so long since we watched a film. Shall I read out the premise here or do you want to do it? Um, No, you do it because I'm good up. (laughs) The third chapter in this science fiction series finds a space station in dire trouble after colliding with an old mining vessel that has been deserted except for one murderous android. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so spoils what we're about to go on to next yeah. get a bit, but... but that's how it goes and that's probably why did you did you read that before no okay well i mean we yeah it's pretty obvious where it's going really isn't yeah. it yeah um this is where i realized snake looked like tiger king <laughs> yeah then the siberia goes past him and then it just changes its course and goes back around yes and they're like oh no and the dog's like running around the dog's called max isn't it? yeah which is confusing because the caption of the ship is called Mac. Yeah. And there's a character that looks like Mackenzie Crook. <laughs> the three Macs. Um, but yeah, then they're like, impact in 15 seconds. And Wheels <laughs> is like counting down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's and they, the bit we saw in the trailer, wasn't it? Where he, yeah. It's like, it's the countdown to darkness. Ah. Yeah. They still start like bracing themselves. Um, Mackenzie Crook grabs max the dog to yes. kind of keep he's it's he's, like it's his dog almost, yeah isn't it? yeah uh, and then they get hit and it like everyone kind of it like fully tears through part of the ship yes yeah, so the it's front quite a cool like yeah the front of the siberia's got like spikes i guess yeah. like antenna stuff but it hits directly with that um and then that couple that are down below one goes straight into her gut and pins her against right, the wall okay that's what that bit is right yeah uh, and the shaking kind of stops the dog's safe, and I think it's the black woman whose name I, I might. It will come up with. later because they they shout it a lot. They're like, yeah, I think it's so and so. Where are you? Um, but she goes, "We're shaken, but not stirred." Yeah, I've got that here. There's there's also during that kind of sequence, they were obviously trying to show the special effects off. There's lots of slow motion and people jumping. Yeah. And that um, is a bit of a Shadow Chaser trademark, isn't it? Like yeah. normally it's something like people getting gunned down. Unfortunately, there's not really much of that in this film. No. But uh I, I kind of appreciated that little um homage. <laughs> it's not really a homage yeah. if he's directed them, is it? Um it could just be a was she called D? D, yes, D. she's D. Yeah. Robina Alston. Um, doesn't have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> so the the woman who gets stabbed dies and her partner is like distraught. Um and they, they said there's gonna be an explosion. Power relays are down, the outer hull is breached, everything's bad essentially. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. They go down to get the guy, but he doesn't want to leave his partner. The professor was in um Clockwork Orange. Huh. Fair enough. Yeah, carry on. Um and they're like, she's dead. Yeah, they everyone's like, her. I think everyone's really happy. And because they're in like a different bit, nobody realizes that, that she's like dying yeah. or dead. And uh, it's a bit but, of like. Uh, but they need to get out there soon because the outer thing is going to go and they're all going to yeah, get sucked yeah. out. And then someone gets sucked away. Someone punches this guy first to get him okay. away from his partner <laughs> and kind of drags out. But then there's bang and they're kind of stuck halfway. You've got yeah. Lennox like holding the door open so they can get to That's it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's with the Russian woman. I think she went down as well, yeah. And then you've got one guy and the guy whose partner. <laughs> it's really yeah, confusing. The guy, the guy whose partner it is, he gets sucked out, doesn't he? I'm um, pretty sure. Yes, he does. So like, but it's really stupid, right? I think two people get sucked out, don't no, they? No, only one. Okay, right. So maybe some debris goes out early on. Yeah. yeah. But he's like holding on to this guy's leg and he's like, pull me up, pull me up. And he's losing his grip. But the floor has got like, it's the metal grating. It's got a ton of holes in. <laughs> so you could just grab onto that. I guess his finger might like get pulled off. But you could just, the other guy, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I but mean, you that's just a... climb up that. It's really weird. It's a design flaw, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he gets he gets sucked, sucked away, away, which is uh, the <laughs> sequel to Flushed Away, porn parody of Flushed Away. <laughs> right. Okay. Sucked away. Um, but the woman ties herself to Lennox and kind of goes down and saves the other guy, and they pull right. themselves through. I'll be honest, I must have missed most of this. I've written notes, but none of that stuff. 
I uh, said someone else gets sucked away. Someone got frozen or something. Really? I think. I think maybe when he's maybe the body of the woman is like frozen because yeah, they the, when they door shuts they look back and they see her still pinned against the wall. But yeah. See what confused me is we see a frozen person a bit later, and I thought before we <laughs> know who that was, I thought the guy like shot out and managed to get on the other ship and then, <laughs> and then froze sitting on a chair. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. This is how well, like, made this film It's was. really confusing. I can't remember so, what characters, I apart know. from it, Lennox. Once there's less characters and the, the main plot kind of starts, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. This first bit is, is a mess, to be honest. So I don't even know which one it was that was... Because uh, because what's ha- because while all these people are down there, we don't really see any of the other ones up on the deck. No, either. so there's no real way of differentiating what's going on. But yeah, they all get back to like the control room, and they're like, yeah. "There's only three escape pods, and they need to be charged. We've only got fifty percent life support." Um, but there's a much bigger problem. In nineteen minutes, um, we're going to get pulled into Mars. <laughs> Right, I missed that completely. <laughs> because only there was a time because scale. the Siberia is still moving, it's yeah. pushing them towards Earth and uh, towards it's... Mars rather than orbiting. And because it's bigger, I guess as well, it's fucked up there. Yes, yeah, so they they need to get onto the Siberia to shut down its engines so they don't all get pushed into Mars. Mm. Um, yeah, because they they start docking with uh, the Siberia and they're yeah. all putting on their spacesuits. The one the space of like, don't forget. It changed course. Oh yeah, and they're like, "Shut up!" That's just it. Just happened on its own. Yeah, and uh, and I'm like, "Are they getting parts from the other ship?" Like, I completely no. They go down and shut down the engine. But the spacesuits again. It's another thing. Look quite cool. Yeah, they do. Like they don't look cheap at all. They they don't look out of place in like a good film. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no, they don't at all. And it's it's, it's the design wise, like the people. Who who probably weren't there on the day all did a good job. <laughs> in the people who made all the the models and the sets yeah. and, and the outfits the, and then the after and the people afterwards all did the but everyone on the day. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So they they board the Siberia and they're walking through and they get told the air quality is safe. So they take their helmets off because clearly none of these people have seen alien. That's what I was thinking. They're like they don't. There could be like pathogens. There could yeah. be. It's whatever always, always and, dumb and as soon as they take it off they're like oh it's it's just below freezing in here yeah they said this. like so why did you take your suit they took yeah. the whole suits off as well i'm pretty sure yeah they? and they said there's like a cryo freeze process that's been put in so maybe yeah. don't take your suits off yeah i think it's it is defrosting now kind of thing but yeah but still. then one of them is like no sightseeing we're running out of time um, and they get to the computer room and the door's been like pulled off and they're like, oh, looks like someone really wanted to get in there. Yes. And we get in there and there's a frozen guy sitting yeah. at the panel. See, this is what I got confused about because because we didn't really meet the guy who was in the couple. Yeah. And he kind of has the same like 90s beard and like mullet <clears throat> kind of swept back hair. Yeah. And because Rhea, the Russian woman, like... Like no, like recognizes him. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's the it's the guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> and there's also a bit in this where they're walking down the corridor, and I think um, Lennox is like, oh, something moved up there, and they're like, huh. And then they're like, right. shut up, Lennox. We don't trust <laughs> yeah. you. Um, but yeah, as you said, the the Russian woman Rio recognizes the guy, and she's kind of quite upset. Yeah. And meanwhile, all the instructions on the ship are in Russian, and they need her to translate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get that either. I must have just not been paying attention <laughs> to this film at um, all. Um. And meanwhile, the like maintenance crew, which is the British guy and the other guy, Snake, and Snake, and Snake Cody, who is Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, Deckard, 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 Tiger, Deckard, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, and the Brit, <laughs> and Cole Urban, and Billy Butcher, <laughs> Billy Butcher, Mackenzie Crook, and Deckard, Deckard, <laughs> walk into a maintenance room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the start of a joke. <laughs> um, and yeah, they, they, and they're on the other end of the radio, and they're yeah, they receiving need to do the, the. They need to. Do the switches in it's, a particular order. It's like a cheat code. It's like you have to do eleven down, twelve up, 
five yeah. seven. but i thought they had to flick it that many times up but there's a number of switches and they've got yeah. numbers on them and they're getting instructions from the russian woman and they kind of do it all but then it kind of breaks up and she's like 11 needs to go up and the and Billy Deckard, no, it's, oh yeah, Deckard goes put it up, and Billy Butcher's like, no, nah, I should definitely set eleven down because he just wants to argue with Deckard about yeah. everything. And then he's like, it's showtime, and he does it, and then it, it just down, explodes. And, then it explodes. and it, Lennox, Lennox is standing there and gets blown back. I mean, he's called Lance now. If we're telling, calling him <laughs> by the wrong name, Lenny Lance Lennox. Lenny, yeah, Lenny, yeah, Lenny. Lenny just gets exploded backwards because, like. Some sort of like it looks like a reactor or something, but it's not one of the main nuclear reactors because yeah. they keep coming up after this. Like the the door blows off it, and he gets like launched back. Yeah, and it's quite um quite a cool explosion. But the explosion had did have the effect of shutting the engine off. So yeah, so it still works. So it has worked. Um, and Lance Lenny Lennox yeah. is kind of laying there dying and Billy Butcher's like, leave him. He looks dead. Yeah. What does he say? I've got it here. Hang on. He's like, is he dead? And they're like, no, he will be. And then he's like, he's dead to me. <laughs> yeah. And Deckard's like, no, I'm going to go get a medic because yeah. like, he's not dead. Billy Butcher is just like so unnecessarily aggro this whole yeah. film. And then like, like, we don't see it yet, but um, like... Lenny's just fine in like the next scene. <laughs> I guess they use like space technology. Yeah. But yeah, he's fine. And then he gets shot again later. And yeah. He's still and like fine. fine. Um, and then in comes the captain who, yes. who was with the Russian woman who looks like Bill Burr. Yes. He did. Yes, he does. <laughs> I, thought he read, I thought he looked like... It's so much like Bill Burr. And that's Burr. Mac. Yes. He's Mac, yeah. Captain Bill McBurr. <laughs> <laughs> But the pacing here, before we go on, is like, it feels like this is the end of the film. Yeah, like, like the it's climax. So, like, uh, this is, again, why I thought it was a different director, because it's so all over the place, like, tonally. And that whole bit, flipping the switches and everything, feels like, oh my God, it's something big. Yeah. And at this point, like, I don't know how far into the film we are. May must be nearing, like, 40 minutes to an hour at this point. I don't even think even that. Think maybe like maybe 40 in. minutes. Yeah. It's wrote, only like an hour and a half long. I wrote at some point how far in it was, but I maybe we passed that already. I Oh yeah, 20 minutes in was when um shaken but not stirred. Right, okay. So yeah, it's about 40 minutes probably at this point at But most. it has been like the last 20 minutes has just been like non-stop action. Yeah, and because we know that Romulus is like the most fun part of it. Yeah. It does feel a little bit like where's Romulus? Yeah, I was like I see I I took a break about halfway through this film. Right, yes. Which was about the 45 minute mark. So it was okay, around then okay. and I was just like there's been no fucking Romulus <laughs> yeah. yet. Like that's the whole reason I wanted to watch this film. Because we I I think this is, you know, we say this with a lot of films that come out with studio mandates and stuff. This feels a bit looking back on it like it was like weirdly edited afterwards because there's a scene where we find out what happened on the original ship and we see they film stuff with Romulus yeah. going around but we don't we don't see so like they might the action have reused scenes that are meant to be in the main Yeah bit. potentially I don't yeah. do you know what I mean like it it feels or maybe, and I just looked up Frank Zagarino's release schedule, maybe it was the fact that he had three films come out in 1995 and maybe wasn't as available as he was yeah. in previous years. But I mean, the fact that this is the third film, he clearly is like friends, at least with John Ayers, because yeah. they keep doing these films together. Yeah, I mean, he had two. So he had one film out, two films out in 92, one of which was Shadow Chaser. Then one in 93, three in 94, and three in 95. Right. So it was just kind of up and up. But, you know, you'd think and this wasn't, it wouldn't have taken a long time to film this. Surely. He could have filmed his stuff in like a couple of weeks, Max. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of times when it could be anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a real shame. And there's a lot of but... times it is somebody else. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah. we, we get a shot from Romulus's eyes at this mm. point and it's 
Because we know it's women, so we can tell it's like, oh, it's the Android eyes. Yeah. But it's like computer eyes. I think the first time you see it, it looks it's it looks a bit more like organic, as if it might be like an alien yeah. thing. And it's like a slightly fish eye kind of scuttling perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then Captain Mac is kind of on his own and kind of pointing his gun around because he can hear the android. Yeah, I think there's there's a there's a bit with all like the pulses on a screen, like all their life signatures, and there's one that's like red and it says unknown. They've yeah. they've like picked it up on their scans. Um but he quickly gets he gets the jump on the captain, gets a chain around his neck yeah. from like above, and the captain like shoots his gun as he's being like dragged up yeah, by his yeah. neck. Um, he's getting strangled and eventually gets like thrown through like a glass floor and gets hung. Yeah, by a chair. it's it looks quite cool. It's yeah, quite yeah. brutal. That's what I mean. Like, there's clearly some good. Like, there's that and there's a shot where someone's falling later. That it's either like that's probably model work with that, like a dummy. But yeah. the, the one later, I think, is actually a stuntman falling down. Yeah, and it it looks believable. It looks good, and it's a shame. Yeah. Anyway, I'm being being a negative Nelly about it, but we don't get as much of that as. But we get um, D. She comes after. Yeah, Mac. she hears like the gunshots. The goes looking. I think she hears him screaming, and she's like, "That's Mac." And then she just gets like exploded. Loads. There's loads of laser shots at her, and there's a few shots that are used in the trailer for this. Bit, yeah. But it's just like her running down the gantry of explosions behind yeah. her, and, and she's kind of just like stumbling side to side, yeah. like. Oh, and it takes her like ages to stumble along it's here. It's really funny because the, all the guns in this seem to be lasers, but yeah. then they explode on impact. Yeah. So they're incredibly impractical for a spaceship. <laughs> one thing. Yeah. And they're not that, I mean, they're funny, but they're not like. They all they all look the same. It's hard to tell like how close the shot was, where it came yeah. from. Yeah. And we get parts later where uh, Romulus is like stalking someone and shooting after them. But it just feels like they're being chased by like grenades. Yeah. It's a bit, yeah, there's a lot of uh, missed opportunities. Uh, but she gets away and starts climbing down like this chain. And she yeah. gets lower. She realizes it's the captain oh, being yeah, hanged. Yeah. Who I think was probably like meant to be one of her like best mates. Because she's, yeah. she's gone after him. She's really cut. And she's like terrified. She's like shaking. With and the, the, the thing that's effective about that is like she was like the toughest one. Yeah. And she's scared. And that's kind of like, was it called like warfing or something? that Where Worf would always get like <laughs> taken out. There's yeah. some sort of trope. Worf always gets beaten up in Star Trek. And that's like, oh shit, this guy's really strong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like every episode he gets beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> Which I uh, guess gets to the point where it... it he it, just doesn't seem very doesn't, strong. Yeah. 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 Uh, but while she, she hears like footsteps and then Billy Butcher turns up. Yes. And kind of like puts his hand out to her and she's kind of like hugely relieved because she thought it was Romulus. Romulus. Um, so they've kind of regathered back on their shit. <laughs> I think it's uh, Mackenzie Crook. Is like, or maybe it's either Mackenzie or it's D. They're talking about how um, Mac was dragged along the floor and they're like, Someone used him like a goddamn floor mop. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I missed that. I was like, what other kind of mops are there? All, all mops are floor mops. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, generally, everyone's kind of pissed off. And Billy Butcher is being a dick because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. I'm um, still calling him wanker guy at this point. I said yeah. wanker guy is such a wanker. <laughs> He's still just British guy in my night. Um but then there's Wills, some exposition isn't Wills, there? Yeah. like the only thing we'd be concerned about is staying alive because <laughs> they've they've stopped themselves falling into mars now but now they're aware of romulus they're like we're still not safe yeah. like people are getting killed um <laughs> i've written my next note is the professor is now german <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's uh yeah yeah and he's he talks about like Planet Juno 5, and there was a new fuel source that the Siberia found. Yeah. I guess they radioed back before they went missing or something. And well, they... I think they had records on their ship that he then discovered. Right, yeah, because he's looking at some records while Rhea has, like, a uh, captain's log from the guy that she found. Yeah. And... <laughs> well, they say it's the fuel source of the future, yeah. and it's worth a lot, both in terms of scientific discovery... A monetary game. Yes, which makes everyone's eyes light up. And uh, Mackenzie says, 
what do you mean? It's some sort of Aladdin's cave and there's a fucking genie guarding it. <laughs> it's like, no, we're not saying that at all. What year did Aladdin come out? The animated film. Uh, Aladdin animated the year of 1992. Okay, so that was very much in the public conscious was, when this yeah. film was being made. Maybe not so much in 200 years. That's true. I mean, the legend of Aladdin is still a, yeah. it's still a, but it wasn't really a Western thing as much, was it? No, I mean, it it was, but not like. I can't imagine many people in the eighties were referencing Aladdin. No, it's, it's like the cartoon that kind of made. I mean, it there's probably. More commonly, I think there was a a film version in like the seventies or something. But when people think Aladdin, most people's first thought will be the Robin Williams film. Yeah. I've just started looking up. Uh, well, so there was a C.S. Lewis book that that spoke about Aladdin in 1956. Right. Um, so it was in the kind of Western consciousness. I mean, you know, there would have been storybooks and stuff about yeah. it. And it would have been like, you know, like, uh, what is it? The 40 Thieves and all that. That's Yeah. There's lots of, but yeah, I not, feel like not the, popular The culture, reference maybe. to this is definitely... Um, the fact that the animated film came out a few years before is definitely a factor in it being re- in Adeladdin being referenced in this film. This is a weird article here. <laughs> it talks about how <laughs> it's talking about Jasmine uh, from Aladdin, and it says, right. uh, "Beloved by more than just my generation, a generation at peak Disney princess appreciation age in 1992." That's weird. I mean, I think it's more referencing, you know, people like princesses when they're younger. Yeah. But also, I know a lot of people remember the part where she's like wearing a sexy costume at the end. So <laughs> I don't know which part they're talking about. Mm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, where are we? Uh, we yes. yeah, the so, nuclear reactor is overheating. Yes, and there's like so sparks and stuff. Mackenzie Crook and Billy Butcher, um, and Max the dog are gonna head to the Siberia to find the fuel that's worth a lot. Yeah, but they don't tell everyone else, right? And the they just don't... But the professor spots them and he's like, no, no, no. But he's like, I'm going to come along for scientific discovery only. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. So and the... this is where I realised that there's... Uh... Oh, no, yeah, you, you go. It's the next bit. <laughs> <laughs> so Rhea is watching the recording from the Siberia. Yes. Um, and... Deckard goes to, like, comfort her. Yeah, this is where I realised he looked uh, a lot like uh, not like Harrison <laughs> Ford, yes. Um, and she reveals that the guy in the chair in the recording was her father. Yes. Captain Yuri Pastov. Nice. I don't know how of all the characters' names in this, he's the one I got. I knew he was called Yuri because they mentioned he was the guy in the first scene as well. Yeah. Even though he looked completely different, he was like, oily and like grimy <laughs> and then he just looked like a like a 90s dude in the other bit yeah he looked a bit like um scott bacula yeah i vaguely know what you, i mean i know who he is and i can kind of picture him so he yeah. looks like of quantum leap and Star Trek that's more 80s really, isn't it yeah but, yeah but that kind of look and yeah. Rhea's like upset. She's like, oh, that was my dad. And then Descartes, Descartes kiss, kisses well, her. Well, he goes, I'm sorry, Rhea. I don't know the right words to say. And then they're both crap. Yeah. And then he, they kiss each other. And I was like, that's a weird time to kiss her. Yes. And at this point as well, I was getting confused about whether he was the guy who had the partner at the start of the stab. Yes. And I was like, no, he got He's sucked He's moved out. on incredibly <laughs> quickly. He got sucked away. Yes. Um. So... Max McKenzie, Professor, and Billy Butcher yeah. um, are on the other ship and they yeah. find like a door and they're like, this has to be it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go into the door. I think it's like a vault, but it's not clear at all. And they're trying to open it and the professor's like, mind if I have a go? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, okay. And he starts trying it. And then Billy Butcher's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, this guy has a serious problem. Like, I don't know if they missed the part where he was, like, addicted to amphetamines or something like that. <laughs> or where he just, like, 
I don't know. Or they 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 missed the cut out of that scene. But yeah. it's in the same shot. He goes to try it and he's hurrying him along immediately. Yeah. It's terrible. And um, the dog, yeah, is just being held by Mackenzie Crook the whole yeah. time. Ridiculous. Uh, very much like his glass eye in the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> films. <laughs> He doesn't put it in his eye socket, though, does he? Yeah, but he's carrying it around for a lot of those films. Um, But the the professor, it's like a wall panel that pulls out. Yeah, and there's loads of, like, kind of canisters, kind of bricks. like, tubes. Yeah, it looks a bit like... uh, A really cheap film, like... Yeah. What what are they called? Like a cylinder, like props. Prop, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It could be, like, cans of spray paint or something yeah it kind of it's about the size of like you know the tubes like tennis balls come in yeah but like spray painted silver probably is essentially that um and they're like it's a very important find and then we get some uh exposition from yuri don't we in the flashback and this is the part i was talking about because he says like we found the fuel and um, everything was good. And then the advanced prototype Android we had with us got a virus and went insane. Yeah. So I guess in this universe, but not on this ship, they have androids. Yes. They had it on that ship. Like not... the android in Alien. Yes, exactly the same. Because this isn't like the film Alien. No. And it's also proving our point from the previous two Shadow Chasers that this is just an anthology series, I yeah. guess. Yeah, and we said, like, last time out, I remember. <laughs> this is um, what I was thinking. We were like, well, what if they just do the next one, like, in a completely different place? And yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> But, like, if they'd just done, like, so the first one is... The, he's got, he's He is a different character in the first two, Romulus. Yeah. Yes. And again, he's different in this. And I'm fine with that. Well, in the first two, it's possible... That he is the same person. But he's kind of the first one. He's more. He's controlled by yeah somebody. And the second one, he's just like his, his own thing. Yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> he's his own thing. Um, and then this, he's like um, not in it much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he is because he's barely in it. Um, I wonder what his screen time is. Probably like ten minutes. Oh god, yeah. Like Frank Zagarino, anyway. Um. But yeah, they. Uh... <laughs> now this is so we get some flashbacks. It's like layered, where it's uh, Yuri telling them, and we get shots, and we can see it's. We know it's Frank Tagarino because he's got the flat top. And yeah, you can see him like walking <laughs> I've written down. It's Romulus, baby. And he's like <laughs> shooting people, but we don't see his face at all. It's all. Yeah. So it could be someone else, I suppose. <laughs> but it's um. Yeah, and it's like a quick montage of him like slaughtering. Yeah, all and people. Yuri's like nothing could stop it. Yeah, and it ends where Yuri's like in the chair recording it and he like spins around the chair and then the door like blows open. And, yeah. and it's all like, this is stuff we want to see in the fucking film. Yeah. It's such a shame. Um, but we're back to our lovely group of four finding the fuel. The little, uh, what are they? Like the ragtag miscreant group. Yeah. Um, and from here on out, Mackenzie Crook is just like Billy Butcher's little bitch. Billy Bitcher, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a bit where someone says, Snake, Snake, is that you? I guess it's the professor as I've So, it yeah, the Mackenzie Crook and Billy Butcher have kind of, they're starting to move away. The professor's like, I've got a couple more things I want to look at. I'll kind of catch up right, with you. Right, okay. But then he hears the sound and gets shot. Uh, we see from the android, from moments his oh, eyes. Oh, we see him get shot? We okay. see him get shot. Right, so um, that kind of spoils the the next bit, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, and the and Billy Butcher kind of hears it and is like, "We'll yeah. leave him behind again." <laughs> Second time he's just tried to yeah. get someone. Yeah, and Mackenzie Cook's like, "We should go back," um, and he just grabs him. But uh, Rhea and Deckard are like, "Where's the professor? We need to go get him. He might be in danger on the other shit." Um, yeah. And then there's lots of lasers at them whilst they're going. Yeah, I think they're just kind of scared off by lasers. Um, Max runs off and Mackenzie runs after Max. Yeah, Max is barking. Oh, he's barking at something we can't see. Yeah, it's kind of like, can Max like sense Romulus? It's not always clear. I guess smell, maybe. Yeah. And then there's (laughs) the first time we see Romulus properly here is uh, Max is barking and um, Mackenzie's gone to get him. And then <laughs> Romulus's head just like 
shoots yeah, down. Yeah, and he looks so weird. <laughs> he looks so weird. He's got like loads of weird bits sticking out of his face. Yeah, his head's like a shape of a mushroom. <laughs> and like half it is like cyborg-y, like yeah. Terminator and the other half is Frank Zagarino. But I who... think in, in the early parts he's even more blobby and I think he regains his form over the yeah, absorptions, yeah. doesn't he? But even at the end, when he's like fully formed, as it were, he's got like, yeah, like a giant Terminator bit stuck yeah, over his face. Yeah, you never get Frank Zagarino's full face. No, and it's so badly, st- I say the effects are good, that's the part that's the worst. It's so obviously like bigger than his face. Yeah, it's he's obviously got a bit stuck on his it's face. It's obviously stuck on his face, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, with Max, Mackenzie Crook runs into Rhea and Deckard. Well, the weird face that comes down goes, here boy, here boy, like that to him. Does he? Yeah, it's like taunting him, yeah. I yeah, I thought it was Mackenzie Crook saying here no, boy no, to get I, Max. It, no, no, he says that on the way to him. He's trying to get him. Right. And then it like parrots him back like Predator and other films. Because <laughs> <laughs> the whole time after this, it's constantly like doing weird phrases and stuff yeah but like later on he doesn't talk for ages no. so later on i thought it was his first line oh no yeah no it does it yeah it does say something when it pops its head down to him yeah um but deckard runs into billy butcher and he's like where's the professor mm. and they kind of have a bit of a scrap because Billy Butcher's yeah. just like leave him leave him yeah that's right yeah he bashed him in the face and i think he knocks him out yeah. And then um Mackenzie is like, oh no, Billy Butch is about to like shoot him on the floor, I guess. Yeah. He's like, the leadership's just changed hands or whatever. <laughs> and then Mackenzie's like, no, let's just go. Like, don't kill him. And then he just like, kicks him really hard. And yeah. Then, and there you go. Um, but the Rio runs into prof- the professor. The professor. And he's acting really weird. I've got here. And she it, doesn't notice. And you're like, oh, what's is, going on? I've got here. Professor is clearly the android. Yeah. He's uh, like, are we going back to Earth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Mackenzie Crook and Billy Butcher have made it to like the entrance to their ship. And shut the door behind them and lock it. Yeah. So that Rhea and Deckard can't get back, essentially, even if they do survive. Yeah. Um, and then Rhea starts to get suspicious of the professor. It's amazing she's taken this oh, long, yeah. considering they seem to work closely together. Yeah. Um she I think she does say, like, are you okay? And he's like, I've never been better. And then she finds a dead body, rolls it over, and it's the professor with his eye like sparking. Yeah, which I guess is part of the like absorption process. Yeah. And then she like aims a gun at the Android Professor. Yeah. And he laughs. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, Don't be afraid. And then he does a very weird shape shifting thing. And we get this weird, like creepy, like classically creepy music at this point as well. Of like do yeah. do 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 the music in this is, is by far the worst. A lot of it, we've had projects like this in the past. Is just so mis like timed and yeah. the tones. There's some I've noted later. It's like it's yeah, just it's... off. But yeah, as he's kind of like powering up with his electricity, yeah, it hurts her ears. Like it must be really loud to her. Yeah, I I think it's the shape changing itself. But when he comes back into more of the classic Zagarino look. He has like blood and like yeah. skin stretched over he him. He looks a bit like Vecna from Stranger yeah, Things. Yeah, I, I, I have no... in the nineties. But the thing is, it's not the professor's blood and bits because the body is pretty much fully formed. There. Yeah. So I don't know if the way he transforms is like it's the, the android's flesh. blood and flesh. Yeah. But he must have sucked, maybe he sucked some flesh bits out of his eye hole or something. Yeah, but we're getting a, a slightly better look at Frank Zagarino yes, here. Yes, in this part here. Just kind yeah. of covered in blood. Yeah. Um, but then out of nowhere, Deckard grabs Rhea and runs. Yes. Um, and they get to the door, but it's locked because yep. Billy Butcher locked it. And they can't open it. Um, and then Romulus is kind of catching them and out of nowhere... D, D opens yeah. it from the other side yeah. and pulls them in. Um, and then she's like holding it shut almost behind her. Like yeah. she's like, uh, and she's like, I'll get this locked. And then she like 
pulls the switch out of the But hole. did you notice? <laughs> they clearly didn't do many takes of that. She's like, oh, look it. And she goes to like grab it and kind of just like hits the thing. <laughs> yeah. And then the second time grabs it yeah. and pulls it down. I, was like, I did think it looked a bit clumsy. I was like, yeah. you should have taken another take of that shot. <laughs> Maybe she broke the switch for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it wasn't supposed to come off the thing. She was supposed to just flick it. <laughs> She's just so badly coordinated. <laughs> Uh, but they get back to the control room and yep. Deckard punches Billy Butcher, yeah, which is not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got like a standoff because Billy Butcher's got his big gun still. And he's yeah. just like, are you sure you want to do that, mate? Uh, and, and he's then... like, I don't want to give up the chance of a lifetime talking yeah. about the fuel. Um, and then out of nowhere, Lennox appears and knocks out Billy Butcher. Yeah. As there's like this standoff. That's right, yeah. And then the ship's like shaking and they're like, oh, it's six hours till meltdown on Siberia. Yeah. And they say it'll take three hours to recharge the emergency pods. Oh, I put four, but... Let's, Interesting. Let's... Maybe they said three to four hours. I was going to say, maybe it's 3.5. <laughs> and then Lennox is like, where the hell is D? And they're like, yeah. oh yeah, we left her by the door. Um, and the warning system's going off and they've got eight minutes left until their life support goes off, like their various life support systems. Yeah, not not super clear. There's no. a part where the oxygen goes a bit later, which but, might yeah, be this part here, I think actually. it is, because they say they're going to need to fix at the main box and Billy Butcher's like, you're going to need my help with this, whether like we're at each other's throat yes. or not. Yeah, I've written uneasy truth, so that's what yeah. that is there. Yeah, and Deckard's like, oh, he's right. But Rhea's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I don't trust this guy. And then uh, oh, Wheels goes Billy to Butcher find... is called Rinko. I've put Renko, but yeah, it's somewhere between Rinko. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rinko.5. <laughs> Um, yeah, Wheels goes to find Max because Max has gone missing and Wheels hasn't done anything in the last hour. Yeah, so he's he's meant to stay at the control monitor while the rest go to fix it. Mm. And he's just with Max, but Max just runs off. That's and he's it. like, okay, I'll go find you. And he's like, Max. And I Max. guess his wheelchair gets hacked here. Yeah, so he's going along, along the gantry, and yeah. it, it looks like it's like melting at the bottom. I think the wheels, like it might be like the morphing. Yeah, like him taking over the wheel. One was taking over the wheelchair. Yes, with it might be that. Bit. Yeah, he might have come through because the floor. at first I thought it was just broken, and then was stuck on speed forward. <laughs> no, but he's actually being directed he's somewhere. He's being controlled, and yeah, he yeah, so. The, the the theory, like the idea of this film is quite good. Like this kind of shape-shifting kind of like T2 kind of... It's a of... bit 2001 as well with like the control in different... Like yeah, 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 like a howl tech. kind of thing. Yeah. But but in, in practice, visually, there's not... They don't do anything to demonstrate it. And so... you, you kind of have to sit and think like, right, what's going on here? Let's try yeah. and figure it what out. What they need to do is have more bits of that annoying POV of that, like, stalking them around pre something happening. Yeah. And then have the thing happen. And then we're like, right, that was clearly Romulus. At least just one scene. Or have that there. happen for the first you know, two thirds of the film and then have like all out action. Yeah. Whereas it's just this weird mix, but he, he gets launched forward and he's like screaming. He's going really yeah. fast and he goes into the airlock. Yeah. And then his like face is getting deformed. And the thing and that's I, funny I don't know if it's it. just the actor or <laughs> there is effects on his head. No, no. So they, they, what they were clearly doing to, to me anyway, is they were like blowing hair dryers on his face. Because yeah. you could see there was like two spots on his cheeks yeah, where, he was, where it was why. rippling. But yeah. It, and he's like screaming. He's screaming. And then he basically like. His head explodes. Decompresses. And like we, explodes. we see his head get really big for a split second. Yeah, and then see like the a, blood on the It's the, the classic screen. 90s morph where it's like, whoop. <laughs> yeah. It's like someone's just freeze framed it and just dragged it really big on like um, a computer. And then the maintenance group as well. There's also an explosion there. Yeah. And suddenly they're getting shot at. Yes. Uh, but Lennox is like, oh, it's D. Yeah. The, again, this is another thing that doesn't make sense because I've written here, it's changed into D. But the whole time, like Lennox is like, Oh, it's D. I'm just going to go see my wife. I'm just going yeah. out. And she's just like shooting at him. He's like, it's Lenny, baby. 
And she's acting so weird. And she's she's changing her voice. It's like the Darth Vader thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? She's changing between this like, she's like deep voice going like, oh, <laughs> and her head's like down and smiling like fucking the clout Pennywise. Yeah, I've got D is acting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she is really acting for a like. Yeah. Yeah. And then she shoots Lennox. She shoots Lennox and he and goes he, down. It's, and he's got a big blood patch on his chest. It's as he kind gets of shot like, there. yeah. And then she says, Did you get this? Uh, oh, this might not be her. No, she this is. She says something in like a robot voice. She says, Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I bet I know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, despite it not being said by Frank Zagarina, they still got a couple of lines. Yeah. In there still. Uh, but they kind of like. But they still don't realize she's a robot. Yeah, but they start to like outflank her. Yeah. And corner her. And they're kind of having a standoff. And then Lennox grabs her from behind because now he's fine despite being shot in the yep, chest. Yep, yep. He's a tough guy. Um, he's trying to like calm her down she yeah. still thinks it's Dean she kind of calms down and yeah. turns around and then grabs him and there's electricity yeah and they kind of they fall together and there's electricity going between their oh, face and then they start kissing and that their faces are like morphing into I each like other this one. I thought it was cool it was like it was like gross body horror it's like yeah. it's like he was being melted like into her and then like as they're as they're kind of molded into each other like laying on the floor yeah so it's Lennox on. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that made me Whoops. jump there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lennox laying on top of D as I kind of electrically like, I think it's against kissing. like a, a, some crates, maybe. It's not yeah. fully on the floor. And then yeah. from like behind their feet, suddenly like they mold, they mold in and Romulus stands yeah. up. And it's almost like, like he's yes. limboed from where they were leaning one way, he's limboed back yeah. up the other and way. And they've kind of morphed into Romulus. And he's got like a cool, like future white vest on now. Yeah. And his classic kind of look, apart from this kind of egregious face, Terminator yeah. face on one side. And they all aim their guns at him. Um, and Mackenzie Cook shoots him. It yeah. doesn't really have any it's effect. It's similar to before. It's kind of like he's being shot. And it's just not touching him. And then he starts shooting back. Um, and then there's a box very clearly labelled flammable material yeah, yeah. that gets shot and blown up and kind of throws everyone to a side. Yes, that's it. And I think that might have been part of the oxygen because now they're all out of oxygen. I think the, the oxygen is just running up. That's like why they yeah. were down there. But it was it's timed as to being after that yeah. as well. Because they're all just like going around gasping. Well, first of all, Zagarino time. What did you think of that whole bit there? That bit <laughs> was quite entertaining that, yeah like the weird and body horror going into whereas like really. up to this point i was a bit like oh, where's my boy where's my boy zag that bit i was like okay cool let's yeah. do this for the rest of the film yes and we don't <laughs> <laughs> so, i mean from here on it's more what we're expecting but yeah but it's not, still not full not full zagarino like i just love the fourth of july no like, you couldn't imagine that line being said in this. No, I mean, there's. I've written down a lot of his lines later, but they're just generic, like... I think I've written down all of his lines apart from that. They're, just, boy. they're <laughs> just, like, I'm a robot lines. Yeah. Like, I'm a robot that was good, and now I'm evil. It's, like, almost... I, I, I haven't got any of them in front of me, but it's, like, I'm here to help you, sir. Bang, bang. Like, yeah. what time is it, missus? But, you know, like, it's as if he's just, like... A C-3PO that's gone evil kind of yeah. thing is, is kind of the vibe that I get from it anyway. And there is in the Darth Vader comics a yeah. like, black C-3PO that's just like really sadistic and I've evil. I've heard about this, yeah. He's quite a fun character because it's all very like C-3PO but really super sadistic. <laughs> that's cool. Um, but yeah, so they, they wake up from this explosion predominantly Rhea and Deckard first. Yes. And this uh, is where they're all like very... They're all doing their, I've run out of oxygen action. Yeah, and you, we hear over the tannoy, like, life support falling below minimum Did levels. Did you ever think that the voice tannoy sounded like Frank Zagarino doing his robot voice? Mm, I don't think it no. was, but a couple of times it's like, is that is that him? Is that going to come into play? It, it wasn't, I don't think. <laughs> but. Um, Romulus gets up and just kind of walks off because he doesn't quite see where they are. Yes. Because um, I think they're still like half. On yeah, the floor Rhea then like passes out because she's run out of oxygen. 
uh, whilst Deckard gets to the switches and turns the oxygen on. Yes, it's very straightforward, which is lucky. And then suddenly Rhea just sits straight back up because, you know, it's, it's, it's that She's easy. just had a bit of a, a, a breath. Yeah, and we, we get a shot of Romulus here, and he's like, in his kind of final form, like half skeletal, yeah. like metallic skeletal, but yeah, not quite yeah. full Zagarino. Some like of his iconic blonde spikes, but not, again, not fully. Yeah, and he's like, he's walking up to Deckard. Deckard, and he kind of stops in front of him. And Deckard's like standing there with a gun. Like, yeah, like he's frozen up kind of, well, they're both kind of frozen in their own ways. And there are like these emergency like yellow they call them strobes later but they're more just like emergency lighting kind of thing yeah um and that's kind of it's, it's kind of like moody situation but he ends up just well we don't actually see what happens to him do we yeah because it's the classic did he get taken over but by Romulus Mackenzie Crook Billy Butcher and Rhea have made it back to the control room yes and they're like, let's get in the escape pod. Everyone else is, well, Billy Butch is like, let's get to the escape pod. Everyone's It's dead. funny. I gave them, I've got vastly different names here. I've got Rhea Fine Snake and Wanker. <laughs> well, but I, I like our, uh, uh. yeah, I've got Brit, um, other guy in Russian. <laughs> I have got written here. Other guy is called Cody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because they're like, where's Cody? And then he starts banging on the door and they're like, Cody's at the door. And but, they have like a whole identity crisis. Moment, yeah. Uh, Mackenzie, no, um, Billy Butcher's like, what if it's not him? Mm. And we're just kind of slowly edging towards the door button to let him in. Yeah. Uh, they comes in and uh, they they kind of, what what's happening? Oh yeah. And he's like, chill out guys. Like, don't need to shoot me. Um, and then he <laughs> I don't really remember any of this part, yeah. No, I know I'm the next part because he he basically explains oh, yeah. that the emergency strobes blinded Romulus. No, he, before, but there's a bit of a tense moment before. Yeah, then, isn't but there? he he's got the the bottle that Wheels was drinking. He's like, I think I know what happened to Wheels. Right. Um, and I then he that. also has Max's dog tag. And because Mackenzie Crook had just been like, right. where are Wheels and Max? Right. He's like, yeah. And then do they think like, oh, you're the android? Cause well, no, he then gives uh, Mackenzie Crook the dog tags and he's like, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and I think by that point, they're like, oh, he wouldn't have done that if he was the robot. Right. Okay. And, yeah. But then he's also like, I found a weak spot yes. with the android. Um, it's blinded by strobe lighting. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, if we go down to the power thing, yeah. we can we can power the escape pods, yeah. maybe? Yeah, well, Snake Mackenzie has a really weird acting moment here where he realizes something and it's like, oh no, he was going to be Romulus. Thought, no, he, he sweeps all this stuff off the desk and goes, all I know, if you overload a circuit, it blows. And it's like, okay, did you need to make such a dramatic thing <laughs> to say that you I can... think he's upset about the dog yes but he looks like he realizes something when all he said is something they probably should all know if they live on a spaceship yeah. um but billy butcher's like he's been injured a bit and they're kind of careful well, so he says it's like i'm too injured i'm gonna yeah, have to stay like, here like, guys go without me i won't make it um and he was like i know it's turn on the strobe lights so like i'll just sit here yeah trust me you yeah. know, there's no reason why you wouldn't Well, I'm like, all oh, right, this is his character arc, I guess. And then he just starts laughing when they leave. And I'm like, well, no, he's laughing. <laughs> yeah. And he's li he literally immediately gets up and goes sit in the control chair whilst laughing. And he's like, start smoking wheels of cigars and drinking his drinks. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. And then this is the kind of finale bit that felt a very kind of Terminator 2 to me. It's the, it's the multi-level gantries. It's the mood lighting. Yeah. It's that so kind of thing. So we've got Mackenzie Cook, Rhea and Deckard going through and they're doing stuff with wires. That yeah. Whatever. I think they say like when it comes to it, do the lights, Renko. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. no, no. I've written here when the time. time. Yeah, they, they set it all up and... and um, you hear, we coming. hear Romulus. You can hear him like stomping down the stairs and they're like, Renko, do it. And he's just like, I think he's gone mad at this point is the idea. I think he's just a dick. But he's like muttering to himself and just like, 
Yeah. I guess he's just yeah. And like then eventually he responds being like, Yeah, okay, I'll do it. And he turns on he turns off the lights. Yes. And then puts the strobe lights on just as Romulus is by them. Yeah, and it's very like the thing that came to mind with me, I the first I think it's like the first episode of The Walking Dead. I haven't seen much of it. They 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 cover themselves in the zombie guts and it makes them like invisible to them. And there's other right. examples I'm sure you can think of, but they're yeah. they're there and Romulus is like face to face with them and he can't see them kind of thing. Yeah, and he slowly walks past looking at all three of them like carefully, but not registering that they're people. Yeah. Um and I think the escape pods kind of activate while they're doing yeah, that. We get they're a like, cool. There's a notification. Um, and then whilst that's happening, just as he gets to Mackenzie Crook, who's the third one in the row, mm. uh, Billy Butch turns the lights on. Yeah. And then he's like, he's got like a bag that he's like dancing with. I yeah. Think it's I think him. it's the bag of the fuel. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he like kisses it. And yeah. Cause I, at this point I'm like, oh, I thought he was hurt. And it's like, oh no, he obviously wasn't that hurt. If he's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And Romulus, now the lights are on, punches Mackenzie Crook down. Deckard and Rhea kind of run to the side. Yeah. And, Robbins, and then Mackenzie Cook gets back up and he's like, I am sick of this shit. And he's like, he's mad. And doesn't he, does he go woof woof? He's like, you, yeah, he's like, you killed my only friend. And he gets like an electric, like, which I think happened in Shadow Chaser 2. Someone like yeah. gets an electric wire. Um, and as Romulus grabs him, he hits him with the wire. Yeah. And they both, I've written, they both dance for a bit. <laughs> that's essentially they're both kind of getting electrocuted, but like just standing in place just and shaking. Around. And then someone falls down. I think it's, it's Romulus. It is Romulus. Romulus okay. falls and explodes because he does that in every okay, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and like, this is the long shot, which yeah. is in the trailer, which is quite a cool stunt shot. And I fall. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Romulus died in the first two films by falling down and exploding. Here he goes again. I mean, it's not far off from that, is it? How it goes. He doesn't fall down, but, it's not, <laughs> but normally there's a second. No, no, this would be the second thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. There, there's always a double thing. So they're not far off. With that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the three of them catch up with Billy Butcher. Yes. And he pulls the gun. Yeah. Starts fighting with Deckard. Deckard decks him. <laughs> he does. But he's like, we're going to take him with us because he's not a murderer. Yeah. Um, and then like some explosions and stuff. Happen. Yeah. They say so there's a whole failure. Yeah. Uh, it says critical systems, something. Everyone's basically a bit hurt. Everyone gets like knocked out. And uh, Deckard is like stuck with his hand under something. Yeah. And we like 10 times they go for a close up shot of his hand stuck like between his pinned. leg and this metal sheet. And then... Within about five minutes, it's out, but we don't yeah. really get it explained. Um, <laughs> Billy Butcher calls Deckard a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's, he's he's up on his feet, isn't he? He's, he's the first one that wakes up, yeah. And he's like pointing a gun at both of them. He grabs Rhea and he's like, you're coming with me. And you're like, okay, this is not good. She and, resists and, and just it gets turns like, out punched that he's, in the he's face. like, you're meant to be mine. And Plot twist, he fancies Rhea. I guess there was a love triangle which explains it. Yeah. But we didn't know that. So. Yeah. Um, you know what? It would have been so easy to just be like, oh, ever since I broke up with that Rinko guy, he's you're been so weird. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, um, maybe there was, and we both missed it, but I don't there believe wasn't. there was. <laughs> um, she hits him to kind of get away, and yeah. he... Hits her back. He like pretty much knocks her down. And gets he? he then gets upset with that. And he's just like, well, I guess I'll just go on my own then. And he, and just... he starts aiming the gun at Deckard to like execute him. Yes. And then out of nowhere gets punched through the stomach. With like an electrified hand. Yeah. Um and it's this is the line here, isn't it? Did you get this one? Oh yeah. So we we see uh Romulus like crawling along with no legs, and he goes, Sorry I'm late. Hope I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Um, and I said this is Romulus's first line after 92 minutes of the film. No, well, yes. Apart from the and, he, uh, yeah. his, his, his dog. As, as Zagarino, yeah, it would be his, his second, but his first kind of proper line in a way. Yeah. And then he says something else. Did you get that um, one? We're getting more close up of Deckard's fingers. Um, and Rhea, he's like telling Rhea to go away. And, he, and she's like, I won't go without you. 
And then, yeah, Bombius goes, it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> Just when you think things are going all right, something always screws it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then Deckard manages to get his hand free and has a gun suddenly and just like shoots Romulus, basically. Yeah, I think Romulus also says, Here, let me give you guys a hand. He may well have done, yes. Uh, but yeah, Deckard shoots him and no. Oh, yeah, I think he up. says that. And then he's like, Don't worry, I've got it. And then he like shoots him. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Because we, because yeah, we, we feel, still think he's stuck kind of thing. Uh, but yeah then they run in they're, they're suddenly like in the escape pods yeah and I, Max is like running down the corridor yeah, and we're the, like oh Max is still the, alive the, the engines start up and the doors are slowly and they hear like a bark and they're like Max Max <laughs> and it's like almost slow motion yeah, running yeah, yeah. and jumps just as the doors close in yeah and and get, like, like, it's like Indiana Jones sliding under the. I'm like, I'm glad door. they didn't just like kill the dog off no, off screen. I least. know, yeah. I mean, they could have gone for an emotional thing and had him not get through, but yeah, I I, I like it the way they did. Um, and I know I was thinking, right? I don't know if you thought they were going to go for a twist here, like the dog is. <laughs> oh no, is, I didn't think that at all. Because uh, suddenly Zagarino is there, yeah, the but he's outside. Unlo- yeah, the power's online, and he's trying to open the door. Um, but then Rhea's like, I've got an idea and kind of turns the engine to like face Romulus. Right, yeah. And yeah, yeah. shoots and it kind of like burns him up. Yeah, this is what I was thinking. Away. He's getting like, Bleh. and they're like, and then she's like, payback time. This is for you, Papa. And she puts it on full and he gets like, oh, I'm not really here. Then we've got classic we're safe music being played. Yeah, <laughs> suddenly they they there's like chill music. It's just and like oh. and they're like, how do we know? This is like the end of the thing. They're like, how do you know? Well, it's not the end of the thing because this doesn't happen. But they're like, <laughs> how do I know it's you? How do I know it's you? There's only one way, and they go to kiss, and then Max gets in the way. Like, Whoa. yeah, and then they both kiss Max, and Max is kissing them both yeah. back. And, and then, then like this old like crooner song like 40s like singing but i looked it up and well i saw it in the credits it's an original song for this (laughs) and it's about space it's like uh, i met you in space and i love you yeah um and that's the end of project shadow chaser 3 well there was a very small audio post credits was there at the very end but all it was was zagarino going it's been one hell of a day huh (laughs) <laughs> excellent um so yeah that was uh that was a film wasn't it uh, yeah yeah um i mean it was something i thought like the, the the effects the stunts like were good it was maybe one of the better looking ones of the series yeah it just had such a lack of frank zagarino yeah and that is they've clearly they fucked up with the characters. There's too many of too them. Many. It's they, hard to follow. They can the do, fact that we've been calling them all these names. Yeah, they can do like all the weird characters at the start, but within 10 minutes, they need to have like got rid of a third of them. Yeah. And it took them too long the thing to is, get like, to that like, point. Alien starts with like a crew of people, but you you have that like playing cards around the table thing and you get, yeah. to, you get to know them all. Exactly. It's yeah. a smaller crew. And then kind of... It, get smaller and smaller and you'd like oh yeah like yeah you i and know, you know these characters. who you're kind of following you know by about halfway through but in this it's so kind of fragmented it just didn't really you know and it was yeah. silly but it wasn't the, the it, wasn't it wasn't the, the same fun kind of silly, silly. Of, particularly the second one was sillier than the first yeah and it was really fun with its silliness with like the kicking and the punching and yeah and, all the actual and the lines there wasn't enough like fights with the android in it no and i think if you're gonna Does... replace it with like a horror vibe then go full into that and do what we say like have them yeah. being stalked does anyone stuff. punch romulus i don't think anyone's like even in the same like vicinity like he could have literally filmed them all separately yeah i just it, it's just a it's just a real it's, shame considering yeah. how hyped we were for this yeah i'd been looking forward to doing this for quite a while and we've I, only got one left now and it's just yeah, like i'm kind of just part of me split on that like because it's a different director maybe it could either be like really really bad because they don't know how shallow chase is meant to be or 
it could be it could like reinvigorate yeah this, the series. I mean, at least now our our expectations are so low that hopefully, yeah. no matter what it is, I I I I vaguely I think it's another kind of sci-fi one, but I don't really know too yeah. much about it really. Um, so. Ratings? Yeah, before I mean, we before to... we got ratings, I did look up some trivia. Oh yeah, okay. Right, so for trivia, um, we mentioned already the three titles of Project Shadow Chaser Three, Project Shadow Chaser Three Thousand, and Project Shadow Chaser Edge of Darkness. Yes, and um, the second one was called Night Siege as well, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So part part of me felt for this. Maybe at some point it was not going to be a Shadow Chaser film. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. just be Edge of Darkness. But then as it kind of got into it, they're like, eh, let's just make it Shadow Chaser 3. <laughs> um, the other one is, I mentioned at the start, Sam Bottoms, who plays Deckard, <laughs> um, was in Apocalypse Now. You did, yes. Uh, both in this and in Apocalypse Now, He's one of two survivors left at the end okay, of the film. Okay, okay, So it's become a trait, Bit you know. It was Apocalypse Now, like, 79 or something. So yeah, well, maybe... Like 16, I think it was that. Like, no, or maybe... Apocalypse Now, I think, would have been... Could be way off here. I think it's a little bit later than that. I think it's early 80s. Apocalypse Now, 1979, epic war film. Oh, I'm getting confused with Platoon, which would have been mid to early 80s. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so 16 years later, he's still playing the last of two survivors. Uh, but that's all the trivia I got. Uh, there was a third one on IMDb that talked about Dee's breathing during her workout, but... Oh, really? No, I just got... Uh, the, the song that I mentioned is called Forever in the Stars, oh, yeah. which was uh, written by Steve Edwards. And uh, it's performed by Randy Crenshaw. Randy Crenshaw? I almost recognize that name. Uh, I mean, he's done stuff. He's right. been as he's been part of he's a he's an actor, I think a voice actor, and he's done soundtrack work for lots of stuff. Right. Maybe I'm just getting mixed up with someone else as well. Uh, he's been in lots of animated films. He's performed, I don't know in what sense, on both Mamma Mia films. So I assume uh, played parts of the soundtrack. He had a guest appearance in season four of Family Guy. Probably some sort of singing <laughs> there. Despicable Me 3, various. Uh, in Call of Duty, Infin Infinite War. War fucking hell. Infinite Warfare. Despicable Me 2. Yeah, Family Guy, there you go. Just pick up with me one, Family Guy, Veggie Tales. Right. Okay. Um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what so overall, what is your kind of vibe? So there? I really, really wanted to enjoy this. And yeah. there was bits I liked that as as we kind of said. Like certain scenes were quite fun. Yeah. I think I quite like the setting, even though it was alien. And as we talked about last time, I like the idea of Romulus being an anthology thing. Yeah. So yeah, it was totally. inevitably going to be a space one at some point. I was thinking while we were talking about that earlier, I think, I don't think this is what the fourth one is, but I was thinking if they ever revisited it or even just as something completely different. Doing like a Friday the Thirteenth style, like kids at camp thing, but it's like a Terminator that turns up <laughs> would just be like a kind of fun mashup thing. I think um, after after we eventually watch the fourth one, if we remember after this conversation, yeah, we should come up with a list of other yes. Shallow Chaser yeah. films with like titles. We could like, try try and do it for the. Trivia of four, almost kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah like yeah. I could. I'm thinking of like um, almost like the Westworld film, like a cowboy. Yeah, where he goes back in time. Yeah, and yeah, he's, yeah. He's that. Well, they could. I mean, Terminator is so. I think this is going a little bit off topic, but Terminator is so suited for that because it's a time travel film at yeah. heart that it's surprising they haven't done Terminator goes to kill. Uh, John Connor's great great granddad in the yeah. old west, and what maybe could be an opening to that is the fact that the new Predator film Prey is going to be set in pre-colonial America. Is that? It? Yeah, I don't know if do you. Do you, do you oh, man, I think I might have read something. About which that is actually um, coming out 
as of recording, as of this, as of this episode coming out, it will already be out. Really, it's on the Disney new Plus. Predator film. It's on Disney Plus for free. On what? On How the, did I miss on this? On the fourth of August. So Thursday. The f- no fourth is Friday, isn't it? Fifth mm. of August, the Friday. Right. It's a big mosquito. Oh wow. Yeah. So and it, it it's um so it follows like Native American tribes people and uh, predators chasing them basically. And why is it not getting a cinema release? Uh, because it's like a Hulu film or something. But oh, it, I'm not seeing a trailer. For but this. either way, if that does well, it could set a precedent for something similar with Terminator. Yeah. Cause... Terminator in like mm. th- like the Middle Ages. <laughs> You're, I was upstairs. There's really like, weird noises. Your upstairs neighbors are moving furniture. <laughs> they all, they wait until it gets dark and they just move shit around. Um, but can you imagine Terminator like versus a knight? Yeah, like, it'd be sick. And uh, Shadow Chaser is the perfect way to do that. Yeah, um, but obviously too many characters. Yeah, sloppy dialogue. It's hard to make sense of what's going on a lot of the time. You kind of there's not enough Frank Zagarino. Like criminally low amount of Frank Zagarino. Um, this bear, this film barely makes it into the top three most Zagarino screen time of films we've covered. Yeah, I don't think it is. Yeah, what do you mean? It just about makes it into the top three of I the mean, amount of Zagarino. It has to be in the top three. But only one. Yeah, but only just <laughs> is my point. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I I wouldn't have been surprised if he had never turned up. Like by the end, yeah. and it was just someone else because half his face is obscured. Um, I'm gonna quickly without reading details into it, I'm gonna check that uh, the Zagmeister yeah. is in the fourth one. I, I he he is because it was on his list. Don't you worry. Okay, uh, it's directed by somebody different. It has got uh, Frank Zagarino in it. Yeah, it so. was down uh, and. This, see, I'm more and more. I'm thinking we should start doing the, you know, the Zag Time podcast because, <laughs> oh, like, hello, my Zag Time gal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do play that song. Is it no? What am I thinking of? <laughs> yeah, there's something. What have we watched? They play that song in like a spoof of. I think it's a Family Guy spoof of Alien. Oh, the alien comes out of the stomach. And does the and dance, like the frog. Like, like the, the frog, frog yeah, from yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just thinking, because he's, he, in 1995, same year this was released, he released <laughs> Cyborg Cop 3, um, which sounds like it would be very, very similar to what we've watched. And looking back, he's not in either of the other Cyborg Cop films. Right. He's in <laughs> Psy Warrior in 1989. Oh my God. There's another Zagarino project that's I think, unrelated. I think we, Did we know that I already? I think we spoke about that last time. I what don't was remember it called? this. Project Eliminator. Oh, we'll have to. Well, when we finish Shadow Chase, huh? Okay. It's we'll, a prequel for us because it's 1991. We'll go back in the early days of the Zag. Fuck. How did I not find that? I don't, um, I don't think I did know that. Uh, maybe you maybe you were keeping that on under your under your <laughs> belt for another time. Yeah, maybe. Damn. Um, but uh do you have any thoughts before we do ratings on Shadow Chaser 3? Uh not really, no. I think I've I've vocalized everything I wanted to. Um yeah, I mean it's just at the end of the day, it's just a shame it wasn't not necessarily what we we're expecting, because I kind of didn't know what to expect. It yeah. just didn't hit any of the same points really yeah, see, that the, I liked. The first two were like they were sleep for us, really. Weren't they were they? bad films that we just really enjoyed and yeah. had great moments. And in. to be fair, I think the first one, pacing wise, was kind of similar to this in that it was kind of just like not much really happened, and then loads happened towards the end. Yeah. But there was enough stuff because there was terrorists as well. There was enough stuff for the bad, the main good guy to fight. Yeah. There was action sequences throughout, whereas all the action sequences in this were either people exploding or like lasers just shooting at people's and feet. And most of the time when lasers shooting at people, we don't see Romulus. We don't at all. We we could have had him with his robot face going, ha! Like, 
We don't ever see him shoot a gun apart from the oxygen tank thing. Yeah, that's the only time he shoots a gun. It really, really feels like he just wasn't there. So uh, what rating do you want to give this? So when I finished it, I wrote 6 out of 10. But right. I, I can't give it a 6 out of 10. It's got, <laughs> I think talking about it has kept it afloat. Yeah. I've enjoyed talking about it more than I enjoyed watching it. I think I'm going to go for 5 out of 10. Okay, cool. Um, I had an idea after I finished the film earlier today, came here, spoke about it for an hour and a half, and think I'm sticking with the same number as okay. earlier, which is a four out of ten. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what we gave the first two. Um, maybe like a six and an eight or something I, sounds about right. Yeah. Or maybe a six and a seven because I think they eights are, still are pretty cheap films. eights are pretty <laughs> rare on the pod. Yeah, It'd be yeah, like yeah. uh like there's sevens that are like well made, and then there's sevens that are just fun. Yeah, and, and like it was definitely the second one was more just it was fun. On on like the scale of like the podcast ratings, like a lot of the films I've watched that aren't on the podcast are probably around like good films are probably around the seven still yeah like a seven a podcast seven for me is like it was pretty good like i might, <laughs> yeah. I, might I might watch it again yeah, our brains have really been skewed by watching loads of shit <laughs> yeah yeah but and like, like an, I think, I think, an eight is like that was good and nine is like that was really good uh, this is episode 52 yeah um i think shadow chaser 2 would be in my top five to like recommend people to Out watch of, yeah yeah of everything we've covered it'll be one of the ones that i'd be like, like that you should go gutenberg. watch shadow chaser 2 gutenberg because it's really good yeah um maybe a project a one of the two probably project the first a, one because it's yeah. it's fun jackie chan stuff it's like it's like uh seminal jackie chan stuff, know, isn't it, may, really? maybe lazarus because i think it's an interesting series but yeah like, yeah i think shadow chaser was like it was so much fun it was like and it felt like and it still does feel like we've we've like we found this like undiscovered gem a little yeah, bit isn't it it? Really and that's quite, there, there is something about that that i think bumps it up a little bit for me just generally like, yeah, like the the, the I, trilogy as a whole i can't even remember like the context of us watching it just it just everything everything i think one. about just makes me think like that zagarino project it's got to happen at some <laughs> point like it's there's some there's some good there's some good names here like just just literally just scrolling through the revenger train to kill hammerhead maximum potential so i've just i've just looked up when we uh when we first <laughs> watched it right in our in our chat yeah uh, back in november um, you you had a f you had four films on like your mini shortlist. Oh yes, I do remember. Yeah, um, yeah. And you said um, we can choose between Project Almanac, um, sci-fi <laughs> film about students building a device. Yeah, because uh, I didn't want to reveal the the time machine nature, which of it, we really. later got to. <laughs> yeah. Project Moonbase. 1953 yeah. sabotage which space we still station. haven't watched yet yeah maybe we'll do that at some point we could do um the lazarus project which was 2008 the, yeah yeah a criminal gets a second chance at a secret project and then project shadow chaser sci-fi thriller with androids kidnapping the president's daughter <laughs> and you immediately said i vote for the last <laughs> yeah, one <laughs> I, I wrote that and i was like nah that sounds good and i was, I was just like yeah shadow chaser sounds good <laughs> Um, did we have an after reaction or did we wait until pause? So <laughs> you said very early 90s. There are sequels, but they dropped the project, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> they do change the name, but they yeah. I mean, the, the fourth one is under a different name on IMDb, but it's still written online in places and released as Project Shadow Chaser 4. So it's like, you know, it's the same as we were talking about. If they change the James Bond game to something else, we can still cover it. It was still called Project 007 at one point. And they do, even in the title of this, I mean, Night Siege did say Night Siege on the versions we watched. Yeah, but this does say Project It Chester said Project 3000, the version yeah, I watched. Project Chester, yeah. Um, but yeah, we didn't really talk about it be beyond that. No. But Although you did um, then send me a pitch saying top secret UFO projects that you're going to add to the list. Oh, yeah, we go. That's what I've been looking for. <laughs> oh, know. here's the uh, bingo on pod, on pod planning. <laughs> on pod planning. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, Project Chaser 3. At some point, we'll get round to 
show face a four. Yes. Or maybe give it a bit to <laughs> to breathe. Yeah. Um, and hopefully going into that, we'll remember two more so than three. Um, but I think that's all either of us have to say yeah, on that. I think so, so now I think it's time for Personal Projects. It's Personal Projects. So, Sam, what have you been watching? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the only thing I've really been watching is Community, which you saw a little bit of when you came here today. Yep. Um, but yeah, the main thing, I, I've got some uh, news from Comic-Con that uh, we didn't cover last time or popped up afterwards. But right. I can save that if you've got anything you wanted to particularly um, Yeah, about again, I haven't been watching much. Nearly at the end of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, on season seven, um, it's it's great fun. Season seven, <laughs> yeah. just got the episode where Enoch dies, and okay, um, me and Sam are both big fans of Enoch. Is that a time loop episode? Yeah, yeah it's a yeah, time yeah, loop yeah, episode, yeah. and Christina fucking loves time loop episodes. Right, okay, okay. So she got really excited about that, and then got really sad at the end because she forgot Enoch dies. <laughs> so he pulls like his heart out yeah to, to use. like use the chef or something. Um, yeah, yeah. but yeah it's it's great fun and also this season is just like deke is the best yeah it's, it's got the bit where yeah. deke and mac get stuck in the 80s for a bit yes and he's just always going to look after mac yeah. like bringing in food he's restarted shield on his own That's and he's right. also like checking in on like child Matt yes and okay, it's like yeah, Deke yeah. is just the best because his parents got like killed or something yeah by the Chromacons yeah, in yeah, previous yeah, episode yeah, yeah. which is why Max all like sad yeah he's just like growing a beard and drinking loads of beer but yeah. he's still like ripped his yeah. the whole time it's like three years or something and he's just like yeah aside from that a week ago at time of release um the England women team won the Euros. Yeah, which is yeah. Very exciting. exciting very stuff. fun. Um, England's first international win since 1966. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think I saw it as the most watched event this year in the UK. So really? Okay. Yeah. Everyone's kind surprised. of really got behind the women's team and yeah. they did really well. It was yeah, great to see. It was good fun. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't there watching with you in the uh, pub that you were at, but watched it at home and had a good time watching it still. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I know it's been said to death at this point, but it seems like this kind of thing is the sort of thing mm -hmm. that really promotes women's football because it was just 50 years ago banned in the uk so it's obviously <laughs> behind the men's game but yeah yeah this could really kick off following women's football we've got a couple of decent women's team local to us so yeah, it might be okay. worth giving them a bit more support yeah now that yeah, you've kind yeah, of yeah. got interest in it I, well, i've been watching a bit of women's football over the last couple of years but you know, when it clashes with the men's football which i'm obviously more invested in and spent more time involved in yeah I'll choose what I know. Yeah, fair but enough. But yeah, it was just, it was really good. The atmosphere at the pub was great and everyone was fully into it and, you know, giving the ref stick, cheering on the players. <laughs> Classic. Um, yeah, it was great. So good job them. Good job them. And, you know, it's it's a uh, nice, it's, in these times, it's yeah. nice to unite the country, considering and everything after, is shit. <laughs> after last year, when we were so close, but but yeah. still so far, I did see a thing nice that was uh, twenty eighteen World Cup. The men's team lose two one in the semi finals. Yeah. Twenty nineteen, the women's team lose two one in the finals. Twenty twenty one, the men's team lose the final on penalties. Yeah. And then twenty twenty two, we were in extra time, and I was yeah. like, Oh God, we can't <laughs> do this it's the again. Same thing. <laughs> Um, no, against Germany, through. who we have lost many penalty shootouts to in the yes. past. Uh, but yeah, they pulled through and won it. So that was great. Um, so yeah, that was that was good. Mm. Um, you said you didn't have got anything else. So no, Comic -Con. No, no. Yeah, well, the main thing, it was something that I saw almost straight after we recorded last time. So one of the things that happened pre-Comic-Con is... People notice now when Marvel uh, start trademarking film titles, they do it just a yeah. bit ahead of time. Um, and it wasn't that long before that loads of the ones we talked about got announced like through trademarking. Yeah. And there were a, a selection which people noticed but weren't announced 
And uh, I think we said at some point, maybe off pod, that uh, with D23, Disney's own kind of Comic-Con coming up, um, there's going to be some stuff that they fill in gaps then. Uh, And I've got a list here of things that have been trademarked. um, And you can kind of tell me what you think of each of those. Okay. Is it like superhero specific or is it just Some of them are pretty obvious. They've got the name. So the first one is Captain America, Red, White and Black. Okay. Oh, is, is that because <laughs> no? <laughs> so that's not the Sam Wilson film. I'm pretty sure that's going to be New uh, World Order. Well, no, that'll be John John Carter or whatever he was called uh, because his yeah, costume yeah, yeah. is red, white, and black. So that'll be like a U.S. agent kind of film potentially. Yeah, that could be good fun. So that might be cool, and they'll probably do that leading up to Thunderbolts and kind of fill in his backstory a yeah. bit. Um, so that could be interesting. We've got the the film that no one was expecting, Celestial's End of Time. <laughs> okay. So apparently that is happening. And I think there was something from Kevin Feige saying that uh, Eros, who is Harry Styles' character, and Pip the Troll will be back. I did see a thing about how like, was like, Harry we'll Styles see them again. is going to be playing a bigger part. Also, yeah. I saw that like... It's been like three films since Eternals. Yeah. And nobody um, mentioned that there's like a person sticking out the earth. But I've seen people compare that with like real world events. And it's like, there's, there, there is stuff that happens and we just don't mention it. Like COVID was big and it, it affected all of our lives. But if something happens like across the world, you don't necessarily bring it up in conversation. Yeah. So it's like, it, they probably should have mentioned it at least once. But yeah. Hey, oh. Uh, we've got Midnight Suns, which I don't know if you know much about that. No. There's a game of it coming out soon, and it's kind of like a more mystical team. So it might be like Doctor Strange or at least Wong. Like Ghost Rider has been in it sometimes. No. Um, that girl with the staff from The Runaways, she's oh, in it yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like a, like a more mystical team up film, which could be quite cool. And Wong seems to be in pretty much everything at the moment. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he could be recruiting for them or something. Uh, we've got Nomads, which could either be a Steve Rogers comes back film, or that could be another potential title for the US agent film. Yeah. And it might just be copywriting everything. Um, because it would kind of they 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 also may just be copyright and stuff just in case. That's exactly it. Yeah, we've got Shang Chi and the Wreckage of Time, which I think I sent you a tweet about. Right, would make yeah. sense for them to at least announce some follow ups to these films. That yeah, I mean, just... Shang Chi is very popular. I thought it was very good. Yeah, so yeah. Let's do a sequel at some point. We've got one that may never see the light of day: The Black Knight Origins. <laughs> okay. That sounds like something DC would do. You know what would... I mean, I don't like that name at all, but the Black Knight, I think, is a mantle that's passed through generations. So having a medieval set uh, superhero and film... Fun. And you could even have Kit Harrington in the lead role and just be like, yeah. his his ancestor looks exactly like him. Yeah. Or maybe even do like a through the ages kind of like Wolverine Origins film where it goes through. <laughs> oh, that the opening like two minutes of or- Wolverine Origins yeah. are really good. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest of the film is absolutely terrible. Uh, I had a friend who yeah. uh, his favorite film is X Men Origins. Oh God! And um, I think that tells you we need to know about his film opinion. Yes, it does. The the other parts there is just to do with one of the animated series, the Spider Man Freshman Year. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know how much you heard about that, but um, I've seen lots of debate over the canon of it. I didn't think we talk about they, it. They they have yeah, we did a little bit. They they've released like a load of concept art as they did with the X Men one, um, and it's. It's been clear both from that and I think some official comments. It is like an Elseworlds what if thing. Yeah. And the they've they've released an image where it's like when Peter Parker walks in and Tony Stark is talking to Aunt May on the sofa, but it's Norman Osborn instead. Right. Okay. So Norman Osborn is going to be his mentor, and there's yeah. there's pictures with there's a there's a Doctor Octopus, there's a Scorpion, um, and. If you think yeah, about it, some of them. there's not really, if they did a, an origin for MCU Spider-Man, there's not that many villains he could have used. Yeah, and it would also like prevent those villains being used yes. in later films. Which is why when it said that, uh, I think Charlie Cox is voicing Daredevil, 
that would make more sense because they could have met in this universe. Yeah. And effectively, it's just going to be another Spider-Man animated thing. Which, which is fine. Is fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bothered to put at all by that. Um, and uh, there is also, I think there was something I was going to say about Daredevil, but I can't remember if it's a leak or a spoiler, so I won't mention it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's 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 all the extra news that we missed cool. from last week. I look forward to coming up. Tell. Um. Before we end, actually, I was wondering if there was something else you wanted to talk about. Mm. Because I've seen lots of people talking about the Riverdale finale. I, I was wondering if oh you've got God. there yet. Wait, is it? I don't know if the, I can't remember if there's a new one this week or not. Let me just quickly <laughs> check. Because people have been talking about how wild it is. Well, the last thing that I got. Oh, God. Okay, no. From this. <laughs> <laughs> so the last, the last one that I watched didn't wrap things up as I thought it was going to be. They they did like their magic mystical X-Men war with this guy who was like a old psychic guy who lived through the right. ages or whatever. It was like a psychic battle. They were like, we've got you. You're back in a different world. And they were like, oh, but he, the last thing he did was he moved a meteor coming towards us. And then it ended with them all looking up at this meteor and no, okay. I haven't watched the episode that came out as of recording yesterday morning. See, I don't obviously follow any Riverdale news, yeah. but some of it trickled down to me. So maybe that'll be something we talk about yeah. in the well, coming weeks. The two headlines you can see here. One says how Riverdale season six finale reboots the entire series. And this one says from Gizmodo, although it sounds impossible, Riverdale just got significantly more insane. Yeah, I think I know the context of both of those headlines somehow. Cool. cool. I'm good. I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to watch cool. that. <laughs> I don't know when. For you tomorrow. Um, cool. So, yeah, that brings us to the end of episode 52 of The Project Project. Mm -hmm. um, if you enjoyed said episode of The Project Project, get on to your podcast listening app. Yar. Give us five stars, much appreciated. Uh, you can give us four stars if you want, but you know, you might as well give us five. Doesn't yeah. make any difference to you. Um, if you know Frank Zagarino or know <laughs> his contact details, um, or if you want to say something else less important, you can get directly <laughs> in contact with us, can't you, Sam? You can. You can uh, send us an email at the project project pod at gmail.com. Or you can find our social media links in the link tree in the episode description. Or you can just search for us as the Project Project Pod on almost every social media out there. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the relevant ones anyway. All the relevant ones. Not that one that Zack Snyder uses and not the Jeremy Renner app. And not the Donald Trump one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, God. Not how I'm aware of. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. So yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, no. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you enjoyed it, just just shout from the rooftops. Yeah, please just do. Just shout. Just shout. Um, go go up to you know how like the Beatles played their final gig on the <laughs> rooftop. Go up onto that roof and just scream. Yeah. The project project's better than the Beatles. <laughs> And just see what kind of response you get. Yeah. Um, but for now, I will hear you next week. And I'll see you in the year dis undisclosed. Yes, but I think whatever year it was, we would have known if it was the 4th of July. <laughs> oh, it's been one hell of a day, huh? <laughs> Bye. Bye.